Astronomers from the Red Dots collaboration have detected three rocky exoplanets orbiting Gliese 1061, which is the 20th nearest star system to the Sun. The second and third planets lie within the classic liquid water habitable zone. Hi everyone, Vega here, and in today's video we return to our exoplanet series to a system that I'm very excited about. Let's look more closely at Gliese 1061 and let's get to it. The Red Dots astronomers seek to discover rocky planets orbiting our nearest stellar neighbours. M-type red dwarf star Gliese 1061 has a mass of only 0.12 times the mass of the Sun. The star can be found at a distance of approximately 12 light years from Earth. Already 7 billion years old, it has one of the most advantageous properties in that it is relatively inactive. Although similar to Proxima Centauri in many other ways, it is thought to have lower levels of stellar activity. The astronomers of the Red Dots collaboration found the new planets using a technique called the radial velocity method which searches for wobbles in the movement of the parent star by using observations from the high accuracy radial velocity planet searcher or HARPS spectrograph at the La Silla observatory in Chile. The report was a detection of three planet candidates, Gliese 1061b, C and D, with periods of 3.2, 6.7 and 13 days respectively. They all lie very close of course to the star and if you look at the figures, actually also appear to be in a stable 1, 2, 4 resonance. The minimum masses of the three planets range from 1.4 to 1.8 Earth masses. The first planet, B, is thought to be out of the Goldilocks zone though, and has a relatively circular orbit. It's likely to be a hot world with little to zero chance of liquid water. But that's where the run-of-the-mill story ends. As we see in this depiction of the system, the two outer worlds, C and D, have highly elliptical orbits, taking them into the red zone where liquid water is unlikely, and then far out into almost into the blue zone where the worlds would freeze solid. In some ways, these worlds might remind us of the Game of Thrones world, albeit on a much reduced scale. Winter would always be coming, and would be extreme, as would summer. Gliese 1061c is 75% more massive than the Earth. The planet receives 35% more stellar flux than Earth and has an equilibrium temperature of 275 Kelvin, or 2 degrees Celsius. The average temperature on the surface would be warmer, of course, at 34 degrees Celsius, or 307 degrees Kelvin, provided the atmosphere is of similar composition to the Earth's. Planet C orbits its parent star very closely, every 6.7 days in fact, at a distance of just 0.035 astronomical units, so it's probably gravitationally locked and in synchronous rotation with its star. Without sufficient time to warm and cool like our seasons on Earth, we might imagine an exaggerated version of Earth indeed. Areas around the oceans may remain relatively temperate and modest, with their temperatures moderated by the ocean currents, but any distance in land could produce wild and crazy extremes, even worse than those seen on Mars perhaps, varying from perhaps as high as 100 degrees Celsius in midsummer to minus 200 in midwinter. That said, we know there are places on Earth with extreme temperatures, like those in Verkhoyansk, Russia, which is also famous for being the coldest town on Earth where people have endured. Also, given the small time frame, it is of course possible that if the world was spinning, even slowly like Mercury are not tidily locked, that the heat could be spread more evenly. These worlds are truly fascinating, within an orbital period of around 13 days, Gliese 1061d is perhaps even more interesting regarding potential habitability. With a mass of around 1.7 times that of the Earth, Gliese 1061d receives a similar amount of energy as the Earth receives from the Sun, and consequently, it lies fully within the liquid water habitable zone of the star, and has a similar equilibrium temperature to Earth. You may wonder where the Gliese 1061 is actually located. To do this, we have to look at the Southern Hemisphere, in the relatively unknown constellation of Horologium, the clock. It's fairly close to the large blue star of Achenar. We find the small red dwarf star positioned almost equidistant between Alpha Horologium and the red star of R Horologii. With an apparent magnitude though of plus 7.5, it is invisible to the naked eye and would require a telescope to view. Be that as it may though, Gliese 1061 does in fact join a part of an elite group of relatively stable red dwarf stars in a local area, alongside the equally fascinating Leuton star. As yet unknown exactly how stable Gliese 1061 is, it could turn out to be an almost perfect system, indeed much like its twin Leuton star, which we find in the constellation of Canis Minor. Moving back to planet D, the equilibrium temperature of 218 Kelvin or minus 55 degrees Celsius would be colder than Earth's equilibrium temperature and a lot would depend on whether it had an atmosphere similar to that of Earth. 
Obviously, being at a larger mass than Earth, it would have more ability to hold on to its atmosphere, unlike a planet like Mars. Gliese 1061d orbits its star every 13 days, as we've said. However, if the planet's orbit is confirmed to be highly eccentric, then like with planet C, eccentricity can actually be desynchronizing and enable the existence of unsynchronized states of equilibrium within its rotation. In other words, its eccentricity might mean that the planet turns more and it therefore might experience a day-night cycle. We wonder what kind of wonderful plants and nature could inhabit such a world of extremes. We know on Earth animal species that hibernate for months at a time, so the small-scale process of a few days doesn't seem a huge leap. Penguins on Antarctica, for example, survive life-threatening cold by gathering together in a huge group to share warmth and minimise individual exposure to the elements, and we would only be talking about survival for a few days at a time. Whereas in the Sahara Desert, the ant's secret to survival are long legs, allowing them to move more quickly and keep their bodies above the scorching sand. And of course, any seafaring species would of course be insulated by the slower and less dynamic temperature fluctuations within the oceans, which would be minute over what is in essence a year that lasts just a few weeks. Gliese 1061 has a rather boring and uninteresting stellar name, but that's where the lack of interesting features ends. Within its system, it harbours two potentially habitable worlds, both likely on highly elliptical orbits. The star itself is a member of an elite group of red dwarf stars that are relatively stable, meaning it is potentially even better than the Sun in terms of long-term stability for life. At over 7 billion years old, complex life has had plenty of time to develop. This mini Game of Thrones world could be one of the first destinations we aim at when we discover more with the James Webb Telescope. Let's wait and see what wonders the ESA 1061 will reveal. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you'd like to support the channel further, you could consider buying me a coffee and I'll link this in the description. If you have any other videos or subjects you'd like to see brought to life, don't forget to let me know in the comments below. It could just be your idea that shows up next week. Thanks again to all of those that do comment below, and I really enjoyed reading your comments. Take good care of yourselves and look after your friends and family as well, and I'll see you on the next one.